good day, traders. This is Richard. Short interest is another concept that I I need to share with you early in your education on the financial markets because the typical person that goes out and invests in a stock is looking for the stock to go up. That's why they buy it. They're, they're, they're sold the stock by a salesman uh, called a broker. And the brokers uh, hawk the stock and they say it's wonderful. And you can get that information on CNBC. You can get it on on Bloomberg Television or Bloomberg Television on the Internet. And you can get it on Fox Business News. You can get all kinds of information, but you will not learn how to do it. This is where you learn how to do it. You'll just be told what happened over there. And those you know, those TV broadcasts, but the typical person who buys a stock expects it to go up, and they'll buy Tesla because it has gone up. But where is it going to stop? It may stop tomorrow, and it may come down. And if you buy a hundred shares of it at whatever it is today, I don't even have a chart for that. I don't I don't look at that. But uh, my wife takes care of all that. She watches it. And uh, I could ask her and she'll tell me what Tesla is, but she's still sleeping. My point is, I'm not interested in that. But the typical person out there that you talk to in school, Russell, or in business, Ryan, uh, is thinking about buying a, buying a, a stock in the market because they expect it to go up. But that's for retail buyers, retail investors, uh, the geese in the back seat in the airplane. They call the pilots call the people in the back of the plane geese. That's really how they treat their customers. Seven hundred dollars to fly from coast to coast. Okay, so it's the way the the stockbrokers are the pilots, and the customers are the geese in the back. They're long for the ride. You want to be in the driving seat. You want to fly the airplane. You want to fly your futures trade. And it is a fly. It is like flying. When you get in it right, and I, I took a couple of trades this morning that the, the alerts came in. We got four alerts today. Two of them were profitable and two of them were not. And but we got second chances to get back in, but by the time I had handled four, I was uh, cloudy. I, I'm just, uh, I'm just not. I, I know that I'm good for two two instruments. I can manage two instruments, but you give me three, and one of them becomes stepchild. I can't treat it with the same respect and the same, the same adoration and the same focus as I can treat two. That's that's why so many families in America have two kids. 100 years ago, they'd have seven. I mean, my father had seven. In fact, it's my, my, my wife's. They had, they're, they're Polish Catholics. They had seven or eight. They had eight. She had, there were eight, there were eight siblings in my, my wife's family. But that's really, and I adored their mother because she was a fantastic, she handled all those kids. They weren't born all at the same time. So she, she managed to raise eight pretty darn good kids. But really, when you've only got a couple of kids, it's probably, and you pay attention, you're, you, can ha you can help your kids really well. But you get too many in, they raise themselves. And that's the way, if you get too many stocks, you get too many futures instruments all at the same time, you can't watch them because there's all kinds of signals you have to watch for. Now, Selling short is the opposite of buying. And a typical stock trader or stock investor, let's, let's, let's uh, refer to traders, futures traders as traders. We're in and out. 
and we don't care whether we buy first and then sell it later or sell first and buy it later to get out. We don't care. They're equal. It's whatever the, the chart tells us to do. This chart is a weekly chart, but it told us right here while we were still in this, it pulled back and we had a sell signal on that, on that weekly chart. And then if we'd have got short right here, we'd have, we'd have made a lot of money between here and here. It's a hundred points. I told you it's $50 a point. So that was a nice trade. Okay. And this was just a good trade. If you bought it down here, wrote it up to there. Yes. Question. Well, I was awake at 5.30. I just, I was slept at ground four and I'm like, I wake again. Why was I awake at 5.30? We were out. You guys woke me up. How? We were outside. Sorry, guys. All right. Um, okay. So the point I'm making is entry. You can sell first and buy later to get out, or you can buy first and sell later to get out. So you got an entry and an exit, and they're equal. So in order to get in, and I really want you to make a promise to yourself to watch the video that I did for Denver Trading Group that you got. I think, uh, have you given it, uh, Ryan, I sent it to you back before I had uh, Russell's email. Have you sh shared it with him yet? Yeah, I have. We just have to watch it. Okay. Well, I'd like for you to both watch it. Uh, it would. You can watch it together or you can watch it separately. But after you've watched it, if you watch it separately, talk about it. Talk about it. Criticize it. First of all, I step on my, I step on my tongue and two or three times, so seven or eight times probably. But my point is, we're talking about my right-hand trade, and this is my right-hand trade right here. That is a, buy, a sell signal. My right-hand trade is a signal to sell. That is a fractal high that pull back, and when it pulls back just a little bit, you start and on a weekly chart. You compare this to a weekly chart. Now let's go, let's go over here to uh, a four-hour chart on the same day. Let's see what day that was. Uh, the date was uh, the second week in January. So let's blow this up and find that date. This is the second week in January is right here. Uh, It went from, it went from, uh, it went from 1430 down to uh, 1300. So it went down 130 uh, points and it did that on the second week. So we go, we go over to the January, the second week. And I think that's going to be right there. And so um, this is probably it right here. Let's draw a box around it. We start right here and we go. So it was a week long candle, right? There's a one, two, three, four, five. I think that's the week it happened, but it so I think those two candles were two split weeks. I think both of those candles on that weekly chart were part weeks. This is part, yeah, there, 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 that's what happened one week and the next week. That says one week went down and the next week went up almost two thirds of the way and then pulled back. And now we were blocked, blocked into this box here. So if we go back to our four hour chart and, and draw, um, I don't believe this is right. This is uh, this is not right. Uh, it has to be over here because it was at the high. 
that's probably the two weeks we're talking about. Because it was a black week, and then we got that white week, and this is the white week. Uh, that's not what I want. I want this. You remember how that white candle, this white candle, started right there at the bottom of that black candle and went up the next week. This is this is weekly. Each one of these candles is a week. And over here, each one of the candles is four hours. So that's the same picture on a four hour chart as we were on a week over there. And so if you sold right here on that sell signal on a four hour chart, and I'm sure you had that same sell signal on a 15 minute chart, a 30 minute chart, an hourly chart, a two hour chart before you ever looked at a four hour chart. So you, you could have seen that and just stayed in it. And so you, you have to kind of have a sixth sense, which doesn't really exec exist except in our minds to, to know to stay, to know to stay. And that's really hard. I'm, I'm a hit and run trader. So I'll take, $100, $200, $300, $400, and I want out before the retrace. You see, every one of these is a retrace. See, see how we got in here and, and, and it went down there, and then it went back up, and we, we could have, if we got in here, we might have gotten stopped out when, when, um, during this period here because it went down here and started going against us. But if we hadn't, if we hadn't gotten out, then we got here and it had gone down some more. And then here, it, we went against this again. And then we waited for this guy. This guy made us some money. Now we're now we're about to close the day. We close the day over here, this four-hour period. That's the one that's only three hours because we don't get four hours uh, on the last candle because we closed for an hour. America, I'm talking about time frame. So this is the end of the day. And we would we would have stayed in and paid the money to, to hold it, it wouldn't have been a good idea because the next week it went up, it, it did this. And so it took you all our money. So you have to know when to, Kenny Rogers, listen to that gambler song, know when to hold them. In other words, know when to stay in the trade, know when to fold them, know when to throw your cards in because you don't have a good enough, you just don't have enough good cards in your hand at this juncture to stay in there with the big boys, the guys who are betting big. If somebody draws a bet and somebody else at the table, there's 10 players at a hold'em table, the next guy says, I'll see your bet and I'll double it. Then that says to you, this guy must have something. They might be bluffing, and we bluff in this game too. But it does give you pause. You better have something to hold on to that you could win the hand. And that, that kind of thing happens. They're going to deal you two cards, and they're going to put five cards down on the table. And if you're on the, if you've got three cards on the table, and you table, and you don't have your hand yet. You've got with a two in your hand, they're going to deal two more cards. But if you're waiting for those other two cards and you haven't got your hand yet, you want out. You know when to fold it's because you can't bet that kind of a heavy raise if you haven't got your hand already. And you could have it because you're only playing with five cards. So if you've got your hand, Already, you got your flush, you got your straight, you got your full house already. Well, you're in Fat City. Bet everything you got on the table. But if you don't, and you're betting on the other two cards that will come over, you're in danger zone. You're, you're going to lose at the table. So you've got to learn how to read these candles like you would a poker hand. And I remember taking a course one time uh, from a teacher who lived in Las Vegas. And we went from California to Las Vegas, so we're at the Sunset Hotel. And after we took two or three days of instruction, 
up in one of the meeting rooms. He sent us down to the floor. He had arranged to have us play in a tournament, just a class. We were in a tournament. We had to put $200 of our money into the pot, and we had to buy into the game $200 a piece. And when you're in a tournament, it's completely different. They, they keep raising the ante. And I'm a very conservative trader. I'm a conservative poker player. So I'm not a very good poker player because I'm too conservative. Well, they screw you in, in these tournaments because they keep raising the ante. I still had money, but the ante on the last two or three bets was like triple, quintuple to what it was started with. Probably started with a dollar and a half and it went up to $20. So my $200 got eroded real quick toward the end. The last four or five hands we paid, I, I, they just ate up my ante. Not, not just my ante, but I mean, the ante at the table, everybody had to put in 20, uh, 15 or $20 uh, the last two or three hands. So we probably paid about 30 hands. And at first it was a dollar and a half and they kept raising it, a dollar and a half, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars to twenty dollars. And all of a sudden my money was gone, not because I bet it, it was because the ante ate me. So I said, I'm never gonna play in a tournament like that again. I don't want to do that. But why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this so that you have a little bit of foundation or a little bit of something relative to what you may have seen before in a movie or something. And so you have to you have to be able to read the candles and anticipate what's coming next. And when you have a topping tail like that at the beginning, that gives you a chance to sell it because the chances are that it will sell down and you'll make some money. And, and this is a good place to take your money and get off the table at the end of the day right here. And you wanted to say, well, I'm likely, I'm likely to just trade between five and seven and get what I can. My three hundred dollars, maybe five hundred dollars. It takes me two hand. It, it take, I have to, I have to trade two or three times to get my five hundred. I can't, just, I can't wait for five hundred on one trade. Here's why: retraces. See how this one went down all the way down to there. And then retrace and turn white. And it, as it retraced, it turned white because it opened here. And, and then it went up here. And and it, up there, it turned around and started coming down. And that's where you would have sold it right about there. And when it got down to to here, before it started back up again, you took. Hey, Rich, I can't see your um, I can't see your mouse when you're. Are you pointing to stuff? Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, I'm pointing. I'm pointing to, uh, can you see it now? Yeah, no? I, I can see it now. I can see it now. Since it's turned into a hand. I don't know why it doesn't want to be a, a nice big red thing, but it's a hand sometimes. Okay. So I appreciate you telling me that. So this is the entry. This is my right hand trade. And when you watch that video, you're, I'm going to talk about it for two hours. And you're going to have the gist of why I like that trade by the time you finish. But take question, uh, write questions down so you can ask me later when we review it together. And, and I'd like to do that next week. So I need you to look at it this weekend. So any day next week that I choose to, to look at that video, because we're going we're gonna to install NinjaTrader next week. That's a two or three day job. Uh, one day we'll install it and the next day we'll uh, add a bunch of indicators and uh, then we'll probably watch the video and after that we'll, we'll trade a little bit on Thursday and Friday on the simulator but probably Wednesday's the day we're going to maybe even Monday we'll watch the video so please watch it this weekend so you're going to watch it twice you're going to watch it yourselves and then we'll watch it we'll, we'll, we'll dissect it now let me show you five or six more uh right hand trades here's one right here here's one right here here's a sloppy one but it's it's okay you made a little bit of money you had to get out before if you if you held it um it would have been a little bit painful during the entry but then 
you would have made money here and you would have made money if you got out down here. You don't want to wait for it to pull back up there and take it. So what I want to do, my objective is, if I'm, the reason I like to trade this early time of day between five and seven is that I can, I can get my $300 per contract uh, before the retrace, before the trade goes against me. Now I find a sweet spot to enter, like right here, and I can stay in it through that candle, through this candle, and all the way down through there. That would have been a nice trade. Now, when it, that was the end of it, when it got down that far, that's about all you can expect. But on this particular instrument, it's $50 a point, and probably, I don't know whether it's $10 a tick, it doesn't matter. Bottom line is, this was the exit. Not here. Don't wait till it gets to there. You, they took away half your money because you started making money here and it made money there, made money there, made money all the way down there. But you gave up money on this kennel all the way up to there. So you want to get out maybe right down here at the bottom. So it's a, it's a timing thing too. So how long did that take? Well, this is a four hour chart but you can look at these candles on a 15 minute chart and so let's do that let's let's just do that this is what we trade on between five and seven in the morning 15 minute chart and 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 this is the period of day we're trading i want to draw a box around our trading okay that went a little bit too far but it's not right I want to draw it on the 5 a.m. I can't draw it down there. I have to draw up above this line at 5 a.m. and go to 7 a.m. So it's going to be eight candles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we start at five. And we usually get a signal to buy or sell um, at 5.15 here. Is that 5.15? Did that candle close at 5.15? No, that candle closed at 5. So this is a little bit early. So that this one here closed at 5.15. This one closed at 5.30. This one closed at 5.45. And this one closed here at 6.00. And this one closed at 6:30. So the money. So we didn't. We did, we we maybe took this buy, but there's not much of a signal there to buy. I might have not even seen that. I, I I'm not. I'm looking. For, I'm a. I'm a bear. That's why you see that symbol of that bear eating that fish because, I'm. I'm after, a quick short. Selling is easier is quicker than buying because it takes no energy to sell. You throw a rock off of a cliff, it goes down, period. You have to climb up that same mountain. You got to have all kinds of equipment and you got to have patience and a bunch of stuff you put on your hands and, and it's an effort. It takes about five hours to climb up that hill, but you can fall off that thing in an instant. That's why I like to short happens quicker. Now, that is a beautiful trade. And it, it formed because we've got a higher high. And so you want to, you'd, you'd want to get in it right here, right in there. And write it all the way. I don't even know where the, I have to, I have to click on this to see where the uh, middle is. The open is at 82. The high is at 85. The low is at 80. Where's the middle? About 80. So the low's at 80 and the high's at 85. So about 82 and a half is the middle. So let's figure out. You can't see it because it's a doji and it's in here. So I think it's right there. So is that 82 and a half? Yeah, that's 82 and a half. So it's, it's where did I draw that? Yeah, that, that, that line, that, that's it. That's the middle of this candle. You can't see it because it's a doji. And now I'm going to teach you about another candle. A doji is a candle 
without a body. In other words, the opening price is identical to the closing price. Therefore, there's no body in that candle. Now here, the, this is a spinner because there's a little body of one or two ticks. And here's a spinner, a little body of one or two ticks. And uh, there's another one, and there's another one. Now here's one that's actually probably a doji. So let's look at this one. The open and close should be the same. The open is 8650, and the close is 8650. See? Identical, open and close. And you see that it, it, it happened to show white instead of black because it, uh, because it probably uh, opened uh, a bit bullish and it stayed white even though it didn't go anywhere. It did go somewhere. It, it rode all the way up to there and it rode all the way down to there, but it closed right there on top of itself. So that's no Japanese word, doji, D-O-J-I. That's, that's a note. No G, dojis and spinners connotate change of direction. So we had a spinner here, but look at the spinner up there on the top of the candle. After it traded all the way down to there, and it traded all the way back up to the top of the candle, it opened there. It went all the way down there, and it closed up there, one tick above where it opened. So that that particular thing is not a doji. It's got a little two-tick body, I think. The open is 83 and a quarter, and the close is 83. So that is a one-tick. Dojis are all over the place. There's one. There's another. There's a spinner. The difference between a spinner and a, and a doji is simply there's a tick or two of body. And when the body is right smack dab in the center of the high and the low, it's a perfectly balanced spinner. Therefore, count on a change in direction. And here's one right here to exemplify my story. Notice how... We, we traded all the way from up here, way down to there, and then we traded up. And then we, we went over here and traded up a little bit more, but then came down. And uh, the buyers had kind of run out of money. And then so this next candle created a perfectly balanced spinner, right smack dab in the middle of the high and the low, the two tick or maybe one tick body is balanced. And that signifies when it closed balance like that. So that's why you watch a 15 minute chart and that's why you watch the close. And on my software, you're going to get a signal. It's the sound of a FINA bell. That's what they call it. I don't know what a FINA bell is exactly, but it sounds exactly like a doorbell. And you'll hear it 40 seconds before the close of a 15-minute candle or any candle. You know, it sounds 40 seconds before the close of the candle, whether it's a 30-minute chart or an hourly chart or a 15-minute chart. You hear that bell. You have 40 seconds to act. So your busiest period in the course of your trading between 5 and 7 in the morning where there's eight periods or eight eight candles, eight, eight 15 minute periods. And uh, another reason I like that time is it's right after I get up, right after I wake up, I get up and I mess around. I wake up at 4.15 and I mess around for 45 minutes and do whatever I've got to do to get prepared for the day, which we're going to go into. But Suffice it to say, I, I'm not trying to trade yet. I'm not thinking about trading. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of research. I'm trying to figure out, do I, what, what, what do I most likely want to trade today? I'm looking for a setup that I might take it at 5 o'clock. But sometimes I don't see it until 5.15. It's funny like that. And every time I hear that FINA bell, I'm busy 
watching the end of that candle. And if I find out at the end of the candle that it's a doji and we've been going up, I'm going to sell it. And look at what I would have gotten. A nice, let, let's take a look and see what, how much that was. That opened at 78, 75, let's just say 79, and it closed at 76. That's three, uh, 150 bucks where it closed. If I gotten down there, it'd probably been about 180 bucks. If I closed, if I exited right there. So the next candle took all my money. So I had to get out in that candle or else I would have lost some money. Because when it, when, we, when it got all the way down to there, I was in Fat City. And then I started seeing these little numbers up here turn in color to green instead of red. And I just said, I better get out because I need to watch those little numbers out of the corner of my eye about five times a minute. So about, you know, every few seconds, you got to look up there and see those numbers and see what that number is doing. This number is the difference between these two numbers. So you got 500 and, uh, so you got 592 buys and 850 and 654 sells, meaning there's more sells than buys. So we've probably got a, uh, we've got a bearish candle here because this is red. So that's a bearish candle. When it's black, you know, it's mm -hmm. bearish. All right, so now I've talked about entry and exit to some extent, and you, you kind of know what we're, we're talking about. So I'm going to put this 15-minute uh, candle back up here on the other screen where I keep it. You always want to, you want to, uh, if you, do you have a secondary monitor on your computer? If you don't, you, you might want to uh, consider getting one for each of your computers so that you can you can have uh, some uh, you have enough desktop to to manage your business because just using a notebook without a secondary monitor is not quite enough, and uh, you can pick them up for under a hundred dollars. You don't need a fancy one. You don't need a seven or eight hundred dollar one. You just need a ordinary. I get a twenty four inch. And you can pick them up on eBay for probably 60 bucks, 40 bucks. Okay. Now, where's that other um, sheet? I need this uh, recorded, Richard, because I got to study what you're saying. Oh, my. It's recorded. Okay. Thank you. In fact, it's, it's, it's uh, right now, it is. Uh, if, I, if I end the recording now and start another recording, you'll, you'll be able to put it into Skype probably. 8 to 80, blind, crippled, or crazy, I will teach you how to use my right-hand trade to take 500 a day to keep the job away in just one hour a day while you watch us trade live right before your eyes.